We're back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. The wrestling juggernauts back in business, ladies and gentlemen, with a brand fucking new channel, folks. We are here to have a good time. My fucking computer fucked on me right when I opened the camera. Cocksucker. We're here to have a good time, folks. Yes. We're here to salivate that wrestling, folks. We're here to give you some rants, reviews, wrestling news, throw away shitty wrestling talk when I probably <laughs> shouldn't be making bids. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Live shows, the whole kit and caboodle, folks. I mean, back in business for life. I just. Sign a contract with the Chinese Jerry for a five year deal on YouTube. I can't, there, WJ. I can't back out or else I'm gonna get the edit, Jerry. So I'm in for a good five years. He, His five year uh, contract, WJ. Five year <laughs> contract, Jerry. After this, we sign maybe with the, the Japanese. We'll see what happens. Jerry. We might maybe have to sign up with Crown Jewel or. Maybe Tony <laughs> Khan going to hire us, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're back, folks. We're back for life. And hey, listen, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I closed many a channel, folks, but I'm, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Jerry? Not crazy, but... Uh, I'm eccentric a little, Jer. <laughs> what they call quirky, Jer. I mean, a little bit so, quirky there, WJ. No, it might be a little crazy, but this Jerry character, you can, you know, you can rely on him. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they rely on him to keep the page open there and stuff. And I'm going to be here, folks. No more fun and games there. You want fun and games, you join the Facebook groups. I mean, wrestling ranters, the wrestling Jesus group. I mean, fuck! I mean. <laughs> but here you're going to get some real wrestling talk, folks. I'm primed. I mean, people tell me, Jer, we want the old wrestling Jesus, but you know what this is, Jer? It's an evolution, Jer. I mean, why go back to the past? I mean, it's time to move forward with wrestling talk, Jer. I mean, podcasting, normal video. I'm getting old, folks. I mean, sometimes I got to turn off the camera to hide my wrinkles, Jer. But uh, you're still a young guy, Jer. You can... You can get us the subscribers, Jer. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna twerk for everyone to get them subscribers. WJ, that's what I'm gonna do. Look. The time has come, Jer, for uh, real wrestling tug back in the fucking game. There, I mean, it's time. What do we got on the agenda, Jer, for for this this pod mini podcast slash live show, Jer? Well, uh. It has just been revealed that uh, John Maxley is uh, he's going to uh, the AA pretty much. He's going to the AA. Um, he's apparently been drinking too much and stuff like that, which is kind of a good thing that he's. Well, that's going why out. he gained about fifty pounds or whatever, and he was looking like shit. And yeah, Jesus Christ, he actually fucking aged like twenty years. <laughs> Since he, was he was drunk on the job for him to get sent to AA like that and stuff. Is it possible he was showing up drunk like Scott All? We don't know the details there. Well, here's the thing, right? What happened was is that he was bashing WWE yesterday, right? So he was bashing the shit out of them. He was bashing Triple H, was all this here. And then literally a few hours after he made that statement... Then it was announced that he was going to AA. So could, could apparently he was saying like in it was like apparently in one of his books or something like that that he would have a stiff drink and then he would literally just 
bash WWE because he was angry with them. But this kind of begs the question, WJ, like there's probably more to him leaving WWE than meets the eye because it's like, did they say, oh, you're drinking too much, Mr. Ambrose? And um, we want you to do this and that and the other. And I mean, there's, there's chances of that happening, you know? There's a, there's a high chance that he was kind of drinking in WWE and um, but yeah, apparently he's going to AA and stuff and uh, kind of makes sense. I don't get why he's so bitter towards WWE, like because they he came back with new music and the fur coat or whatever. It was bad, like oh, the yeah, guy yeah. was given multiple world titles or at least one that I remember there. Um. He was given big storylines, big high-profile matches, a match with Brock Lesnar and stuff. Like, I don't get what he has to be so bitter about. <laughs> like, you know, and he went over to AEW. What was he doing there? Sweet fuck all the past three, four months. They gave him a title run. When he was wrestling as champ, all he did was fight against jobbers, Lance Archer, and a bunch of bums, Eddie Kingston, or whatever there. And, um, like, what was so better for him over there? You know what I mean? Fighting uh, jobbers the past three four months on dynamite getting to wrestle a 60 year old japanese guy was the grass so much greener like in wwe could have had big matches against roman reigns and stuff like this you know what i mean yeah and now he's doing what he's he's in rehab was it that good of a choice to fucking leave like and why would tony khan have to announce it so we can look like some kind of good guy there and make ambrose look like a drunk loser in the process like jeff Hardy, you're a big fan of Hardy, jared yeah. he's cleaned up his act the more than once or whatever but sometimes it takes a few tries for this and get off the sauce i'm i'm off the sauce this month for myself wj you know so i might have to join dean ambrose you know what i mean <laughs> Hardy is always gonna be known for being a drinking guy you know scott all he's always gonna be known as a boobs hound and all this and Say Jimmy Uso is going to be known as a drinker, drinking and driving and all of this or whatever. So going out publicly and telling it to people that Ambrose is going to rehab, I don't know if that's really a good move. Like it's going to make him look bad. You know what I mean? Should have just said he was injured there. Like. Yeah, or, or just say he has to take time or something like that. Or, right. like, for family, could, like, you could have just said John Moxley wants to take time to help his family. Or, like, there's a million different ways you could go about it. And he's just, rather than that there, he's completely, like, they've made him look like a fucking drunk, as you say. And now what's going to happen is everyone's going to look at um, John Moxley with a microscope now. You know what I mean? Like, um Oh, hey, what are you doing now? Oh, you should go to DDP now and all this here kind of uh -huh. stuff. So he'll be under a, a microscope type deal. And, you know, the thing is with him, like, I, I, I think me and you were even saying this, like, before we started this whole um, group again, that, like, Jesus Christ, when we were in the DMs, we were looking at how bad John Moxley was and his fucking theme song. Like, what type of fucking theme song is that? Apparently, it was bad that he was in WWE with the new song and he had some kind of fur coat or whatever. I thought he looked a little bit cool like that when he came out with the sirens or whatever that he, they gave him at the end. Apparently, that was so terrible. And this and that. A new haircut, some kind of jacket with sirens and his music apparently that was so terrible like and now like you're talking about 
the goofy uh, team song he has. It's a good song. It worked for certain movies and stuff, but it doesn't work for him kind of deal, you know? Yeah, it's like, it looks kind of cheap as well, you know, like the whole it's thing just looks very cringy cheap. Cringy and corny looking with the tough guy walk and that song, like he's trying to be a tough guy with, with the song. Yeah, it comes off cringy to me, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, it's too kind of cheesy for me, like, you know what I mean? It's, you know... I mean, he should walk in like fucking, you know, have some Rob Zombie in there, you know what I mean? Or fucking, you know, have like some fucking good hot, like metal music, you know what I mean? Or something, you know, because that's not his character. Like when I, I remember when me and you were watching it for the first time in a long time, I went, is that his theme song? And you were like, yeah, it's a new theme song. And I was like, what the fuck? It doesn't match him, you know what I mean? Also, the like, look, like, he, he looks like a big, he looks like fucking anyone who's watched EastEnders, he looks like Phil Mitchell now. Like, he's bald head, he's got cheeks like a hamster now, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not bashing the way the guy looks or anything like that, but it's like, you know, that's what happens when you drink a lot of whiskey, you know, your fucking cheeks grow, you fucking put on the weight, and, um, yeah, it's, it's not good, like, you know, it's What's really that? not good. That was the song of Charlie Sheen in the baseball movie or whatever. So when people think of an entrance with the song, they they think of the movie, not of him, right? It's like the Sandman in the in the CW came out with Enter Sandman. You know what I mean? Yeah. If Ambrose comes out with Enter Sandman, it's gonna look like a cheap wannabe thing. Uh, this, uh, which is what it looks like here a bit. It it was cool for Charlie Sheen's character. Plus, that was a comedy movie. But when he comes out with this and he tries to look legit badass, and it's like wild thing oh he's so wild i mean it's just comes mm. off as lame yeah. no like, literally, literally i mean you were watching this as wild thing du, 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 du. you make my heart sing and i was like what the fuck is this wj is this like real is this okay. like real this is like ridiculous it, 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 oh, it, it, it's like, I don't know. It's like he needs a more hardcore kind of fucking theme song. Like, uh, it's, uh, it sucks. Yeah, the whole thing sucks. And he goes there and he just becomes a big drunk. Like, he leaves a real company with real medical staff and everything. Goes there and f and they do nothing with him and he just becomes a big drunk. Like again, how's the grass greener on the other side? You know. I mean, I'll read the official statement here. So this is the official statement from um, um, Tony Tony Little Dick Khan. So. John Moxley has allowed me to share with you that he is entering an inpatient alcohol treatment program. Um, John is a beloved member of the AEW family. We all stand with him and Rene and all of his family and friends as he shifts on his focus to recovery. I don't see the point of announcing it again. Like it just it's going to make him look bad for no reason. Like you say, just say John Moxley needs time off for personal reason. And if apparently he's in some tournament or whatever, just fucking replace him. That's it. You know, um, and it's going to be weird. Like, the thing is, he's one of their top stars. So, like, who have they got left? Like, they've got fucking Daniel Bryan. They've got they've got fun there. Oh my god, Jesus, talk about a fucking disaster, like. They got old man Jericho, yeah. 
Here, speaking of people need to go to fucking rehab, Jericho definitely needs to fucking go. I don't care what anyone says. He like, is getting fucking fat now. Like, the guy is about to fucking explode in the ring, it looks like. Fucking, fucking alcohol. Wait or fucking retire. Like, use him as a manager. Fuck, you know what I mean? He's still physically able to have a match, but it looks all fucked up, the match, right? Put him as a manager, make him wrestle once every six months if he really has to wrestle. Yeah. Or make him wrestle simple matches. Tell him to stop doing the lion salt before he fucking lands on his head and breaks his neck. Yeah, like Enough with that, there, fuck. Like he just, he just Chris Jericho. If you talk about anyone who needs a fucking absolute to go to rehab, it's like I hate to say this, but it's fucking Chris Jericho, like Mister Propaganda Jericho, yeah. the demo god. If he wants to help the young talent, then he can put them over on commentary and be a manager. Like, he could manage the inner circle kind of deal, manage Sammy Guevara, his little buddy, or whatever. You know? Look, I'll show you a picture. I'll show you this here. Oh, fuck's sake. Fucking Raddit. Piss off, Raddit. <sighs> Fucking blank it out and shit. Big shout out to the people in the chat there. Let's see. Right, okay. Gonna be downloading this and sticking it on YouTube there as our official first video on the channel. And we're off to the races, Jerry. AEW Dynamite review coming on YouTube. Look, like, look at this. Let's see this, Jerry. Uh, the stomach god. Like, it looked like... Obviously, you know, he's he's got like big arms and stuff, but he's got like fucking flab and shit hanging off and it's it looks fucking needs to get on the fucking treadmill, obviously. There, like quit drinking for two months, get on the treadmill and just lose a bit of fat. Yeah. We'll make him wrestle with a shirt, fuck. At some point it has to happen. These old wrestlers start wearing shirts. And the thing is, like, I, like this is the thing. <clears throat> we still don't know why fucking Chris Jericho had a, such a major problem with WWE when he when he left. Because like, he didn't he... get to wrestle for the Universal against Kevin Owens. He fought for the Intercontinental instead or whatever. Apparently, he was mad about this. But also, I think it's because he knows in WWE is shelf life. If he looked like this, they wouldn't put him on TV in WWE. You know what I mean? Yeah. If he looked like this and he's the age that he is, they wouldn't put him on television. So he goes over there, he gets to goof around and say stupid shit, put it on the t-shirt, and make money. As opposed to in WWE, they wouldn't put a guy who looks like that on television. And I love Jericho, you know what I mean? I know, so, well, I used to like him, but now he's like becoming like a fucking parody of himself. Well, like he's him. a big goof with the stuff he says, all the propaganda bullshit, the demo talk. And I can you see stuff. him? Can you can you see him after all of this going into the Hall of Fame? Yeah, he's gonna go in. You think so? No yeah, way. They made him appear on WWE Network, right? But what what about this dark side of the ring shit, though, that he's doing, that he's producing? 
Bungie talks, Jer. No. Bungie talks, and he's going to help Dan make money when it's his turn. They're all going to say exactly that. Jericho, he was in AEW, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff he said that's going to make people talk. They're going to watch it on Peacock or whatever. Uh, it's uh, it, Well, I mean, AEW, we'll, we'll talk about the ratings here, WJ, okay? Brian, what you call him? Is it Alvarez? Brian Alvarez? I always call him Brian Hernandez for whatever fucking reason. But uh, Brian Hernandez. Well, uh, Brian Alvarez. Um, he he didn't really talk that much on Twitter. WJ, you know what I mean? Not uh, not like Brian, him at all. Time, didn't they get a million viewers for SmackDown on FS1? That's good numbers for FS1. Not only that, but as much as we have, and we still stand by this, that there's absolutely nothing to do with the demo, and it's a complete load of absolute horseshit. SmackDown demolished AEW in the demo. So more people that are 18 to 49 watch SmackDown than they did on um that, that on AEW. So <clears throat> it... it I mean, let's be honest, demos don't work. I wouldn't even call it a victory for a demo well, because how come WWE fans don't go on Twitter bragging that we won the demo or whatever? Yeah. No, well, these because it don't. It's not a thing. Yeah? Like advertisers use that. Okay, man. How is that fucking relevant to us as a fan? What an advertiser thinks. Like, so would you like to hear the new excuse that the uh, that the AEW fanboys are saying now, WJ? Do you want to hear what the current excuse is? So the excuse is, that, so they couldn't say anything about the demo, obviously, right? They couldn't say anything about the ratings. So what they're saying, their excuse is, is that SmackDown is a 20-year show and AEW is a two-year show. They can't could, be saying this for their forever. They used exactly. to say the same thing about TNA, right? Oh, TNA's only been on TV five years. It's only been on TV 15 years. 100,000 view. I mean, WWE's been on six, 60 years. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'd like to see them on TV for 60 years straight and still get 2 million viewers on the Friday night. Like, you know what I mean? Sports gets that because it's sports. Sports will never go out of style. You know what I mean? You'll always have football, basketball, hockey on television. Right? But a, a TV show, after a while, the TV shows, the ratings go down. You know what I mean? He's been on TV with Raw for how long? 20-something years. They smack down however long it's been there. And he still has 2 point something million per show on SmackDown. That's good. Right, the ratings have gone down, but still, for a show to be on TV that long and still get that, it's right. People talk like it's shitty, but every show, a regular show, reaches its peak, and after a while, it goes down. You know what I mean. It's like the Big Bang Theory. Like everyone started watching the Big Bang Theory, and then it started getting low ratings. Like after a while, like you know, every TV show gets uh, a big high, and then at some point it drops. You know what I mean? That's part of TV life. So WWE being around that long and still getting that is an accomplishment, you know what I mean? Plus they're they're making record profit, like you know what I mean? Yeah. We'll get serious there. If AEW is in 60 years, it's gonna have 15 views, probably, you know what I mean. They, they had a million something for punk and then they're down to 500,000. 
they dipped below a million last year. They're supposed to be going up. According to Meltzer, they were going to go up and beat Raw. They're already going down. You know what I mean? I know, yeah. Like, it might keep going up. I don't know, like, what the fuck they're going to come up with to try to get it up. They're going to need some Viagra on, on the back to get that up, Jerry. I mean. Well, you got to look at, um, for example, his team, Fulham, right? Um, Fulham Football Club, now they're in the championship, which um, is pretty much, it's the AEW of, of football leagues. Um, they, Fulham Football Club were in the Premier League, which is like the elite, and then they got relegated to the championship because they were doing shit. What's the other football team? Was it the Panthers he has? Uh, the Jaguars, Jacksonville Jaguars. Jack, um, and what are they doing now, like? I don't know. Apparently, they're a bad team that always lose, I think. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, that's what I've read on Twitter there. So you look at this guy, right? And you got to look at this guy. He, he, he's got the Jaguars. He's got Fulham Football Club that have failed. And now he has this, this which is failing. Like, people, like, whether people like to admit it or not, it is completely failing. Like, I mean, you had CM Punk, you're paying him a ton of money, and you're getting, what, 600,000 views? There's kids on Twitch that get more than that. You know what I, I mean? Like, it, it makes no fucking sense. Like, what, like why Why is it that, why is it people so hell? Like, this is the thing, right? If AEW fans actually, cr like, give constructive criticism to it, like we've been doing, give it a constructive criticism, tell them Tony Khan, look, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to, you need to actually have, you need to appear to the casual fucking audience. It's that fucking simple. Like, that's the only way you get from, from half a million to a million. You got to appear to the casual audience. Like, at least give them something. You know, and and the thing is, like, if you look at fucking and Eric Bischoff fucking t t tore him a fucking new one, was it last week? And he yeah. pretty much said to Tony Khan, he was like, "Look, you need to stop making these excuses. You need to stop patting yourself on the back constantly." He had you know a, what I mean? a there was a recent interview I was reading today, or he was on this podcast, and he said, "You need storylines." He's like. Maybe you guys are calling this a storyline backstage, but it's not really a storyline that it's true. There's no stories. He just makes indie match cards, and it's like a if you get a story, it's done in a very lazy fashion. Somebody attacks somebody. Oh, next week, big match, right? And it's really like microwave. Uh, uh, a feud. Uh, it's all like microwave. They fight, they attack each other 10 seconds on week one, and they have a match on three days later on Rampage or a match the next week. That's not a feud. Uh, it's not building up to anything. The mm -hmm. only thing that they're building up is Paige and Kenny Omega, but even that, it's there's no real story. They just had a few matches. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Last week, he came out as the Marshmallow Man, and sadly, that's the best that Adam Page has looked. <laughs> and he was dressed as Marshmallow Man. Like You, can, yeah. you still can't take it serious because it happened. You know? so and what, the what, and what the was the rating? Because we didn't say it, just in case... So I'll get I'll get the ratings here once again. Just bear with me. I'll get this here. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> but um, let's get it here. And Adam Page, he's not. If we don't know if he's ready, you know what I mean. We don't know if if he's even championship material, let alone ready or whatever. Like. Rampage, <clears throat> Rampage got six hundred and twenty-three thousand views. Okay. SmackDown got a one point three million. 
In the demo, they got a 0 0.29. A Rampage only got a 0 0.25. And that's be another week of FS1. And SmackDown beat him again. You know, like decisively, and that's with the, the handicap of FS1. You know, like. And and not only that there, but apparently they're gonna be interviewing Tony Khan. Okay. So apparently, um, it's been announced that apparently um He's going to be going on Dave Meltzer's show, apparently, if we can get it here. Tony Khan will join us on the Wrestling Observer today at 3 Eastern time. Talking the title elimination, it's plus more. So why 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 is this is the problem that we're having here? Uh, I, that, read, I read the, some of that. I don't remember what was said. He was talking yeah. about more about Moxley and... Uh, Different shit. I don't remember there. It's on Lad, note with you. Lads, react to that Adam Bompier WWE versus AEW video. We'll leave. We might actually do that then next time. So we might. So we might. We might do that next time. We'll. We'll, we'll definitely do that there. You know. Yeah. Um. So we have. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know it, if you are kind of, if you haven't seen what we've been doing on on um. On the you know the ranters and stuff, we now have the technology to react to like full videos now. So we just don't play; we actually play the full videos and stuff. So we can do reactions live now, um, which is pretty handy. So we now have that technology to do so. Um, but yeah, um, as I said, there like it just to me, it's just I feel as if what AEW needs to do is distance themselves away from Dave Meltzer. Anyway, and, and anything in D, like BWCW, don't be ROH. You know, like, yeah. Because these yeah. fans are retarded. Eventually, they're going to turn on the product just like they turn on every other wrestler. You know what I mean? That's the track record of these smarks. It's get behind somebody 110%. Then once the person becomes champ or whatever, then they just turn on the guy or forget about him. They love somebody on NXT. Then when he goes to the main roster, they hate him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, Vince is going to bury him, so I'm just going to stop taking any kind of uh, interest in the wrestler and I'm going to stop tweeting about him or, or buying his merch. So no wonder McMahon doesn't push these guys, you know? Yeah. They get a big following on NXT. Then when they go main roster, it's like the following has just disappeared. Nobody gives a shit anymore. So McMahon don't push the guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. Like, these fans are me mental. They're sick. I don't know. It's 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 a new a new era of wrestling. It's like a weird fucking political thing. There, you gotta fucking watch your back. Uh, just making a video uh, with with political style propaganda. Bischoff voices and opinion. All these fans are trying to bury him all day on twitter it's like get a fucking life you know what i mean yeah this off appeared in aew a couple times they adored him and he was great get a fucking life like for real like it's 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 just sad at this point like you know um well I was gonna say, WJ, we're obviously we're gonna be going live, by the way, on my channel as well. We're gonna be plugging um, the, the the page itself there, so we're we're about to do that because we're actually recording this on the Wrestling Ranters there. We're recording it on the Wrestling Ranters, but yes. um, I'll post the link in the description below for this video as well. But um, what I was thinking of doing is what um, what uh, Jacob was saying there. J Jacob Duet there was saying that. We've got a few videos to react to. So from on Friday, I believe WJ, 
I think we're going to go live again, aren't we, on Friday? Yes. So on Friday, what I'm going to do is get a few videos all set up for reactions. Some of them old school, some of that old school uh, videos there, WJ. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to this because, honestly, WJ, I love it. The, the comeback, Jerry. Subscribe today, ladies and gentlemen. That are wrestling juggernauts back on YouTube, back forever, Jared. Back. That's right. Forever, forever, forever. <laughs> AW reviews each and every week. Big rants, the whole nine yards. Pay per view reviews, raw reviews. Sometimes I won't do the raw reviews. Sometimes I'll do them <laughs> and I'll post them on the Wrestling Jesus group on Facebook. And then Wrestling Ranters. Yeah. I might even bring back SmackDown reviews, WJM. I'm feeling yes. that saucy, so I am WJM. Jerry's yes, going to review the SmackDowns. I'll do the Dynamites and stuff like this. Raws, possibly Rampage. You never know. It depends how, uh, I'm, how I'm excited I feel, Jerry. I'm going to check out, because I haven't really fully seen CM Punk, really, so I'm definitely... I'm definitely this this weekend. I'm gonna watch wrestling, you know, and uh, get myself caught up on everything, like you know, and get yes. us in the mood. Time and to I watch him back wrestling again, yeah. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> it's good wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, Jerry. I might watch and tag, do a review or something. You never know, there. They got Moose as TNA champ. Did I see you say something positive about Moose? Yeah. Or well, I quite like Moose. Like he's Me too, actually... I, I like Moose. He's not a good in-ring wrestler. He's not a, a great talker, but there's something about him I like. Maybe because he looks like a wrestler. You know what I mean? I don't know. I got no problem with Moose as TNA champ. Yeah. Well, they need to fucking sign him big time. Like, like either W. I'm surprised AEW hasn't even signed him. Because he's too like, big to go there. <laughs> Cody no. Rhodes. His penis is bigger than mine. I mean, I'm <laughs> going out with a black girl. I mean, oh my god, he Jesus has a god. real black penis. <laughs> penis is way too big, Tony. Don't bring him in here. <laughs> Randy, why you keep looking at Moose's crotch? Aren't you satisfied with mine? <laughs> By the way, we only got 100,000 views on our shitty, retarded reality TV show. Wait, do they have a reality TV show? Oh, fuck. All right, but I, I, I only watched a few clips. I'm not watching that. Fuck it. No, Maybe no. you can find that if you want. There, there, there. Yeah, my, I'll try and dig that up. I'll try maybe and you get, can sleep, boy. We can't get my book of the I got up. Maybe you can watch it and do a review. I'll 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 dig out my bucket and spear WJ like I do when I'm in uh when I'm, do, in, raw, when I'm in the big star. Raw reviews, dynamite, rampage, TNA, but I'm gonna draw the fucking line with this Cody Rhodes bullshit. <laughs> 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 I will do anything for a view, but I won't do quite <laughs> a prize. <laughs> <ID. laughs> well, subscribe today, folks. We're staying open. The shop's open, and you are all welcome to come in. If I freak out and I, I quit, Jerry keeps the page open. I come back a week later, and we're back in this thing. <laughs> Stay open there. I'll keep her open there. The Chinese have sent me the instructions and I gotta follow them there. <laughs> the Chinese there, WJ. They're they're coming off to you like okay, I'll be back, Jerry. We've said everything that needs to be said, I think. 
I think we do. Uh, WJ, you want to sign us out? <laughs> oh. Until next time. Peace. Ah.